The Interdisciplinary Studies Program in John Jay College is pleased to welcome you to the fifth of our lecture series, The Legacy of Brown v. Board of Education in the Ongoing Struggle for Justice. It is my pleasure to introduce our speaker tonight, and I promise this is not going to be a very long introduction. It could have been a lot longer. In 1963, I attended the historic March on Washington which featured Dr. Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. I've heard that speech many times since, but my memory of my, that day does not include that speech. Instead, it is filled with the memories of the many songs that were sung from the base of the Washington Monument before the march began and from the Lincoln Memorial during the rally. Of particular significance for me was the song Blowing in the Wind, sung that day by Peter, Paul, and Mary. The group that brought that song to national attention earlier in the summer of 1963, two years after the poet Bob Dylan penned it in 1961. Peter Yarrow is the Peter from the group, and he has continued to lend his voice and immense talent to the struggle for social justice from that day to this day. A struggle that is at the centerpiece of John Jay's very reason for being. Thus, it is fitting that John Jay College's lecture series, A Legacy of Brown in the Ongoing Struggle for Justice, feature a second visit to the college by our brother and struggle, Peter Yarrow. I could waste a lot of time going over his many achievements, but I think I would prefer to quote from his website to demonstrate that he has brought his participation in the ongoing struggles for justice up to the present, building on the great legacies of the civil rights and other struggles from the time of Brown forward. His most recent project, and I quote, is based on his passionate belief that music, with its power to build community and catalyze change, can be a particularly powerful organizing tool as a source of inspiration for all of us, especially children. In 1999, he founded Operation Respect, and I'm quoting again, which disseminates a program, a free program, utilizing music and video along with curricular materials designed to establish a safe, compassionate, and nurturing environment in both schools and summer camps across the U.S. Operation Respect's classroom-based programs, Don't Laugh at Me, D-L-A-M, is available free to teachers, parents, and all educational advocates through the generosity of the Monroe Hill Company. You can actually find it on the website, www.operationrespect.com. Org. It's utilized in over 20,000 schools in the U.S. and internationally. It's been hailed by the educational community as a key response to the challenge of bullying and many forms of physical and emotional violence among children and youth. John Jay is proud to welcome a man whose entire life is devoted to showing the integral role of music in the never-ending struggle for justice. Peter And I have, I have uh, spoken to students previously at the art professor's behest. And this will be a, a little bit different from other uh, presentations. And uh, I, I think that there are a few people who could talk to you about the role of music. And, uh, and the social change and, and, and political uh, consciousness in the nation. But few who have this long an arc of involvement with the efforts. When I was there at the March on Washington in 1963, Paul and Mary and I were introduced by Ossie Davis, who is a, a performer. How many of you have heard of Ossie Davis? Okay, good. He's, he's a terrific African-American artist, and he was kind of the host for the event. And before, I, uh, before he went up, he said, what would you like me to say? And that, what I wanted him to say has a lot to do with uh, why I'm here and 
and the topic that we're discussing. What do you think I might have asked him to say? Here we are, there are a quarter of a million people. There was a lot of fear before we got there about whether or not it was going to be, um, there was going to be danger, whether there was going to be uh, fighting, whether there were going to be um, people there who were trying to destroy what we were creating. Uh, and that was standard for, uh, for uh, demonstrations of, of, of note, that there were people there, agitators, who were given the task of trying to make something that was had a wonderful intention turn into something that was anything but wonderful. And here we were, we had not yet heard Martin Luther King's speech. There were a lot of performers who were sitting there, both as your Professor Michael has indicated. Um, I know you don't call him Michael, but I do. Because uh, we're friends. Uh, and, and there was a staging area before the march took place where there was singing. And then at the march, Peter, Paul, and Mary got on the stage, and we were going to sing two songs, one called If I Had a Hammer, and the other Blowing in the Wind. Blowing in the Wind had just peaked on the charts the week before. If I Had a Hammer had been a big hit in America, and everybody knew it. How many of you know If I Had a Hammer? Raise your hands. How many of you think you might know if I had a hammer if I sing a bit of it? How many of you don't care whether you know it or not, you just want to hear me sing it rather than talk? Okay. <laughs> How many of you know Blowing in the Wind? Raise your hands. How many of you know who Bobby Dylan is? Raise your hands. Ah, uh -huh. a lot more people know Bobby Dylan's name than know Blowing in the Wind. It is his most famous and important song in many ways. And it was the song that introduced him to the vast American public. Okay, back to the issue at hand. Here you are. You're a singing group. You're going to be singing a song, a song that is meant to inspire and reach people in a particular way so that they will gather their hearts together and commit to doing something in the face of grave, horrific injustice in our country. And Ozzy Davis, the great actor, married to Ruby Dee, who is still alive, Ozzy died a very few years ago, comes to you and he says, what do you want me to say in the introduction? What would you suggest? If you don't answer, if somebody doesn't answer me right in the next 10 seconds with an idea, I'm leaving the room, and that's the last you're going to see with me. See me. One, two, you can raise your hands. What would you say? You could say, welcome, Peter Paul Mary. You can say anything. The point is that you have to open your mouth and participate where I am going, and that will take be the nature of this exchange for a long period of time. There are a lot of people who will talk to you, and they don't care if you talk. I have no interest in talking to you if you don't talk. Yes, darling. Yes. I would say, say whatever you feel like. Say whatever you feel like saying. Well, that's good. I, actually, that's not a bad thing to say to people who are going to introduce you. But I didn't say that. What did you think? Hi, my name's Peter. Hi, my Peter. name's Peter. This is Peter Paul Mary. No, no, well, he's going to introduce us. Well, this is Peter Paul Mary. This is Peter Paul Mary. All right, who else has an idea? What would you think? See, I'm not asking you to regurgitate information. I'm not interested in you remembering anything that I say. What I'm interested in is your getting you to think. You're about to make an introduction. I mean, you're about to have an introduction made of you before a quarter of a million people, most of them African-American. The time is when, at that era, 
If you're in Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, it was then and it is now, the reality is that you cannot use a public water fountain unless it says for colored only. You cannot go to a, a, a bathroom, a public bathroom, unless it says for colored only. Your brothers and sisters in Georgia and Mississippi cannot vote. They can be lynched. And no, no, there will be no legal repercussions. And there is a, 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 a theater called Constitution Hall, and a great opera singer is, is, is not allowed to sing there because she's black. Okay? That's what's going on. That's the situation in our country. And we're standing there, and we're, we thought we should be frightened, maybe. But it turns out we're not. There's just love all around us. The most amazing kind of love. And in the midst of this, you're about, you're, you're a singer. And you're about to go up there, and the person comes and says, what would you like me to say before you sing? Yes. Uh, how about to say this is my friend because they automatically just show people that you can, you can, you can do it. It's okay. Okay, that's it. She said, how about saying this is my friend mm -hmm. because that would show that a person of color and a person with white skin are friends in that era. That's certainly a very good thing. So in one way, you want, you want the tone to honor our presence there. At the time, you may not know this, but there were many people who uh, were Caucasian, who were involved in the civil rights movement, very deeply involved. And, and there was a great partnership between particularly Jews and people of color. In fact, the civil rights uh, acts were signed in uh, the Religious Action Center of the Union of American Hebrew Congregations, called RAC, the RAC, Religious Action Center. Okay, so that's a good start. Somebody else, what would you say? I need you all to think now. Think, what would you like somebody to say so that when you get up there, yes, my brother? Uh, just thinking from the point of view of being of a white person and talking to Ali David, I would have told him that I wanted him to introduce our group as part of the struggle and the best way he could from his point of view as a man of color. That's beautiful. Yeah, I have. The suggestion was that he would introduce us as part of the, that he should be introducing us as part of the struggle as a black man to a white group saying, you're here as, and recognize that we were part of the struggle. Exactly. That's exactly the point. Because if we just get introduced and say, oh, here are some people to sing a song for you, you know, well, that's not, then you're external to the event. Then, oh, let's take an entertainment break. You know, but we weren't there to be entertainment. We were there because we were committed to this struggle, deeply committed. Long Mary, Mary, when she was growing up, she was, she had songs sung to her by Paul Robeson was a very, very famous uh, African-American who was a genius. He was an athlete. He was an actor. He was a singer. How many of you have heard of Paul Robeson? Okay, those of you who have not, Google him, because you will be amazed at what he did. He was very left-wing, as were we. Paul and Mary and I, left wing being very progressive. That means we believed that there should be fairness. <laughs> That's what left wing was. <laughs> you think, oh, you're a comedy, you're a red. Oh, yeah, you think that people, we should have greater uh, equality so that the, the distance between the haves and the have-nots is not humongous like it is today? Oh, you must be a comedy. 
And perhaps you want a little justice. Have you ever heard of the term justice? Justice is not just something that's a matter of law. It's a matter of something in the heart. We were there for something, for a kind of justice that was essential. Not just justice in the law, but justice in the sense of equity and fairness. That's why we were there. Thank you. What is your name? Antonio Pat. Antonio. Let me have a little applause for Antonio. That's exactly the point. So I told him, because I didn't want them to just say, oh, well, you're Peter Paul Mary, and of course you know Peter Paul Mary had a big hit with this song or that song. No. I said, Ozzy, introduce us, say, now we have a group of singers who have come to you to share musically what this whole march is about. See, so we wanted to be identified as part of the struggle. And when we were presented, therefore, if you go and you can Google us singing, you'll see Ozzy say those very words. And then we, well, then we sang. And when people heard us sing, what do you think they did? Yes. I, I assume that they sang along or maybe held hands during that time. You're right on both counts. Okay. They, they sang along in, uh, in, in the song, If I Had a Hammer, which is an up song, an energy song. And in Blowing in the Wind, they held each other's hands up high like that. Again, you look at the television coverage and uh, you'll see them doing that. And, and it was amazing. Now, what? What is it? Let, let, me, let, me, let me sing uh, one of the songs with you. At least part of it. I'm going to ask you to sing the chorus. I know you're. How many of you have sung in class before? In this class, in this class. How, okay, so it's not usual, right? How many of you are a little shy about singing? Raise your hands. How many of you are shy to raise your hands? Raise your hands. <laughs> All right. Here is the song. Now, when I hit the words that you think epitomize, specifically hit the nail on the head of why we were there together. Raise your hand. Don't raise it like this. Not like that, that's not acceptable. Raise it like that. And I'll know that you have hit, uh, that, now if you, think it, if you think it's hitting the nail on the head, it goes like that. If you say, that relates to why we're here. Okay, then you go like that. And if you don't think that it's specifically relating to it, don't raise your hand at all. So listen to the words, and this is the song, one of the two songs we sang. And this is the one where they held each other's hands, and they went back and forth like that. They hadn't figured out what death meant yet, so that wasn't what was happening, all right? <laughs> a song written by Bob Dylan that was made popular. Now you come over here and you sit in these, no, 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 you don't sit over there, no, no, no. You sit over here, here, here. You come join the other people. There you go. We're waiting for you because I'm going to sing a song and I need for you to be seated. There you go. Okay, thank you. Here we go. Those of you who don't know what we look like, Paul and I had goatees like yours. Stand up, show us your goatee. Yes, that's a goatee. Turn around so they can all see, okay? That's right. But you were a lot thinner. That's right. I, I was a lot thinner. But I didn't eat as well as you guys are eating at the time. And Mary was the most beautiful woman you could imagine, but she was a woman who said what she felt and thought, and she was a role model 
for young women who were growing up at the time, who didn't have any idea that they could be straight, tell the truth, and gain power by just being determined. The women were not supposed to do that. They were supposed to be subservient. They were supposed to get married and say, I promise to love, honor, and obey my husband. How many of you would like to get married and say, I'd like to honor and obey my husband? Raise your hands if that's something you'd like to do, that you'd like to obey your husband. Well, can you believe it? That See, there's, in the struggle of women for equality and justice, justice meaning fairness, at the time, women were told, you can be a librarian, you can be a teacher, you can be a nurse, uh, you can be a, a, a school teacher, pretty much, and that's about it. But don't try and be a, 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 a leader, don't try and be the head of a company, don't try and be somebody who competes with men, and the way you get your power is use your feminine wiles. Get guys to say, oh, she's so pretty, let's do this for her. No, Mary said, do not do that. So that's who Mary was, and she was very beautiful. She had blonde hair, and she used to whip it around like that when she would sing, and everybody would say, holy Gaddafi, or something like that. Here it goes, here's the song. Remember, you're raising your hand when something relates. How many roads must a man walk down before they call him a man? I'm sorry, your teacher is inappropriate. Yeah. How many seas? It does, it does, but it's far fetched. How many seas must a white dove sail before? She sleeps in the sand How many times must the cannon balls fly Before they're forever bad The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind the answer is blowing in the wind. Now this is how I'm going to teach you the, co the chorus. The words are, the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. But I'm going to do it the way we did it at Occupy Wall Street. Okay? Because we didn't have any mics. Somebody would say, mic check. And everybody would answer, mic check. Let's try it. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. I would like you. I would like you. To know the words, to know the words, words of the chorus of this song. Of the chorus of this they song. They are. They are. The answer, my friend. The answer, my friend. Is blowing in the wind. Is blowing in the wind. The answer. The answer. Is blowing in the wind. Is blowing in the wind. Okay. Now this time, I want you just to say it with me. Don't sing it. Okay, you'll see. I'm doing it with while I play the guitar. We're saying it together. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. I want to see all your mouths moving. Say it again. The answer, my friend. singing it, the rest of you keep saying it. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. Once again, everybody saying or singing it. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. 
The answer is blowing in the wind. Going to the second verse. How many years can a mountain exist before it is washed to the sea? How many years can some people exist before they're allowed to be free? Now all your hands should be up. How many years can some people exist before they're allowed to be free? How many years can people of color be allowed to live in this country and not be free. That went right to the heart of it. Okay, I'm going to sing that line again, and at the end of it, all your hands, especially yours, are going to go up completely high, unless you've fallen asleep, in which case you're excused, okay? It's okay. If you fall asleep, don't raise your hands, okay? How many years can some people exist before they're allowed to be free? Good, how many times? How many times can a man turn his head and pretend that he just doesn't see? Together, the answer blowing in the wind the answer is blowing in the wind let me hear you sing it a little louder now the answer is blowing in the wind in the wind the answer is blowing in the wind how Must a man look up before he can see the sky? How many ears must one man have before he can hear people cry? Are you listening to the words? How many ears must one man have before he can hear people cry? Who would the people be in this case that they're referring to? Yes. African Americans, exactly. Pardon me? Yeah, that's true. That's now. But at the time and at this march, the consciousness was focused really solely on people of color who were of African-American descent because there was the legacy of slavery in our country. This was not just, uh, you know, prejudice against gays or, or opportunities shut down for Chicanos or women, you know, uh, who were unequal, but unequal rights, unequal pay, and not even been uh, voting for a long time. But how many, these, all thinking of it in terms of the quarter of a million people who would gather there, the cries of people of color from slavery when the people of color were property in this country, the horror of that thought Although there were slaves, that Jews were slaves in Egypt, and slaves existed a long time. When you conquered a country, you could make those people your slaves. That was the way it used to be in the good old days. Okay. Before there, how many ears must one man have before he can hear people cry? And how many deaths will it take till he knows 
that too many people have died Together the answer, my friend Is blowing in the wind The answer is blowing in the wind Let me hear you now, look at me, look, look at me, look at me the answer, my look at me, is blowing. When you see my lips move, make your lips move in sync with mine. Here we go. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. A little louder. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind the answer is blowing in the wind now you applaud okay okay now i'm going to ask you to think again what is the difference between my having asked you to sing with me and what might have occurred if I had just asked you to listen to me sing this song, what is the difference? Yes. By singing with you, you allow us to engage with you emotionally to understand exactly oh, the time period. Obviously, that was in the 60s, so you know it's been over 50 years. So it will be hard for us to really engage emotionally with that time period, unless we probably could sing with you, understand the words fully. And then, and then, and then actually, exactly, give this man an A. Because you see, if you, if you can get your heart into it, if you're just watching me do something, I mean, it may move you. I mean, you can be moved by a song watching somebody sing it. This is not American Idol, my friend. I want, but I, at that time, along with Paul and Mary, wanted people to know in their hearts that there was this connection between the words and what we were singing. So indeed, that's, that's the difference. But there's another difference. What's the difference between my singing it to you and your singing it together with me? I want somebody who has not answered yet. You, it doesn't, there are no wrong answers. And if anybody laughs at somebody who, who gives an answer because you think it's a funny answer, you're going to answer to me, and I'm a big guy, so just watch out. All right? No, no being amused by somebody's... Because any answer that doesn't make any sense gets us to the place that makes sense. Why, what is the difference between my just singing to you? Okay, you all be quiet, and I'm gonna sing, yes. Pardon me? Exactly. This way, you can be in harmony with each other and in harmony with me. And if you do that, something extraordinary happens. That's amazing that has fueled the movements from, for many, many decades. What happens if you know that you are in harmony? What happens? What's different? Yes. Then you know that you're not alone. You understand that you are not alone. Exactly. Then you're not alone. Perfect. Give her an A. I'm talking an A. A little applause. You know you're not alone. If you're just standing there and you're listening, you are alone in your response. But if you're singing together, you say, hey, I'm connected to these other people. They're feeling something I am feeling. And not only that, it makes you feel that you have helped to create that moment. If I'm just singing alone, you could say, oh, Peter, that was wonderful. I love it when you sing songs. But if, you're, if you've created the moment with me, 
inside yourself you say, hey, that moment belongs to me too. And that's what happened. Because when we sing a song together, we connect emotionally, as you said. We know we're not alone. We feel in harmony with each other, and we feel that we have power. Because if you want to change something to make turn injustice into justice, you need to feel that you can make a difference. If you say, I can't make a difference, you wake up in the morning and say, I don't know what to do. This world is all screwed up and I don't know what to do. But if you say, I do know what to do, I can make a difference, then all of a sudden you can be part of changing the world to make it a fairer, better place. And that's what everybody at this march felt. And one of the reasons was that the music allow them to feel connected to each other's hearts and empowered. And that has been the case for all this period of time. So we've just shared something that lets you actually experience what it feels like to be empowered. If I were to say to you when you walk in the room, okay, everybody, let's march on the administration building. This is nonsense. We're we're doing this. Look, that's what they've been doing in Ukraine, right? I've been in Ukraine in the past couple of years three times, and I'm very worried about these people. But they felt empowered. This, this guy, Yanukovych, was a thug, a cruel, mindless thug, part of the mafia, and they stood up to him. It's very dangerous now. How do you think they got their hearts together? They felt empowered. They said, we can do this. Okay, now I want you to sing, the answer is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. Okay, with me. I want you to sit up straight. Sit up straight. Here we go. Just singing the chorus together. And when I ask you to sing it more softly, do it more softly. I ask you to sing it loudly, sing it loudly, but do it together and listen to each other, listen to the sound that you're making. saying the answer softly the answer my friend is blowing in the wind the answer is blowing in the wind that's the way we sang it at at uh Andrew Goodman's gravesite we were asked to come there and sing by his mother who is Andrew Goodman does anybody here know who he is. You know because you know. You know because you know. Yes, the gentleman in front of you, yes. Yes, wait a second, wait. Pass over this microphone to this gentleman who knows, who's got the answer. Perfect. He, tra he traveled uh, to the South uh, in 1963 with another two guys from New York City to support the struggle, and he was uh, killed by... Uh, uh, Ku Klux Klan. Right. By, by the organization. And, and not until actually a couple of years ago was anybody ever brought to trial for this murder. There are three of them. Uh, one of them was black, James Cheney, and it was Andrew Goodman. Uh, and... Uh, Goodman, Meredith, Michael Schwerner, and uh, Goodman, Cheney, and Schwerner. And 
they were they went down there to register blacks to vote. So because one of the main issues was that blacks were not empowered to vote. So if you can't vote, you can't change a policy. If you can vote, you can say, well, we're going to put people in office who are going to say that young black children should be able to get an, equal, an education along with white children. The other huge issue was um, whether or not black children and white children could go to school together. Because if you kept these kids separate, you know, you could have the, the black kids disenfranchised and not given a good education. That, that was a way of suppressing them so that black people would not, they would be kept in place and they would not become competitive with whites. And, and it was a way of assuring that they would be inferior because they were not giving given equal opportunities. So it was oppression. But if we could come, and the third issue was jobs, because it was March for Jobs and Civil Rights, so that there could be economic possibility for people of color. I mean, this is, to you, this is ancient history. To me, this is yesterday. Now, why would we, why would we be singing the words, what do you think it meant? Remember, this was the first song that brought Bob Dylan to the American public. It had reached number two on the charts. Everybody knew it. And it was saying these words. You know, it wasn't saying, you know, uh, the treasure of love is easy to find. It was not about, you know, teenage dating behavior. They tried to tell us we're too young. No, it was not about shrimp boats is a coming. They've, all of a sudden, there was a music of conscience. And it appeared on the horizon. And it became very much a part of these efforts, of the struggle for equity and fairness and a better country. Why do you think the chorus is, the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind? Nobody knows what it means. Bobby has never discussed that. But I've sung it a thousand, five thousand, twenty thousand times. And I have my thought. So there's no wrong answer. What do you think that means? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. Yes. I think it's no, wait, wait, wait a second. We want you to have the microphone. It will be passed down to you with great rapidity and love. There it is. It's a loving microphone. It yes. is. It's lovely. Um, I think it's something <laughs> like uh, the truth is out there. Like the answer will come to you. You just have to like put yourself out there. You can't get the answer if you're indoors. That's right. You can't. You cannot. You have to make your accessible, self accessible. The answer is all around us. Give that girl an A. Hear that? Hear that? Yes, right. All right. Little applause. Little applause. What else might it mean? It could mean many things. Yes. Now, no, somebody wasn't answered. I want to see everybody here saying something before. Yes, over here. It could be that um, that people out are talking out there, so it's like it's blowing in the wind, so it's going from person to person. That's so right. Whispers. There is something going on around. There, 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 people are talking about this. They're feeling that. Listen, listen, folks. Something is changing. Get in tune with what's going on. Open your heart, open your mind, listen with your ears. What else might it see? Somebody else who has not answered before. What else could it mean? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. When there are seeds that are going to be uh, a landing in various places, they're either brought there by birds or insects or something else, but the other way, uh, more commonly probably, is seeds that blow in the wind. And seeds representing sure. knowledge and ideas and that kind right. of thing. That, that the seeds of change are all around us. And if we let 
Let the wind blow them to us. We open our hearts. We will hear them. The answer is, is all around us. It's within our hearts, yes. It's, it's about what? I feel like he, when he's saying that the answer is blowing in the wind, he's talking about American flag, how you say, flag? It, flag. it could be that the American flag is calling to us. That's yeah, a very that's good a, idea. To show the that, entirety. That, that, the if, that if, when you see the, the, the wind moving the flag, you say it is calling to us. That's, that's what David Halberstam thought about. He was a great journalist who died a few years ago. When he heard Mary singing 500 miles, he said, you hear that yearning in her voice? She is yearning for a better time. She is yearning for a, uh, it, for what, what you're referring to as the, um, the possibility of coming home to, to what we should be, what our hearts should be about. That's true. So, now, what's the difference? Let's sing the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind softly and then loudly together. Here we go. The answer, my friend, with me, look at my lips. The answer, my friend, is blowing, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing. So what's the difference in the intention of these two? The one, the first one soft, and the next one louder. What do you feel internally is different about those two? Somebody who has not answered before. Yay, go for it. She's gonna give you the, the, uh, the microphone. All your answers have been wonderful, yes. Um, I think the internal, saying it softly is, um. I guess kind of reminding yourself um, what you believe in. And when you get louder, it's like, now I need everybody to hear me. Yeah, that's right. The eternal one is saying, let us gather our feelings together and let's, let's, let's believe in this together. And the other one is saying, okay, let's do it. You know, so one is the way we sang it in at Andrew Goodman's grave when they installed his, his tombstone. And the second one is saying, okay, we're out here and we are going to make this change. So it's, you see the dimensions of singing together can be varied and they can empower you and bring you forward in various ways. Okay, now sing it yourselves. I want to hear you sing the answer, my friend. Sing it however you want. Here we go. I'll start you. The answer. I want everybody doing this. Come on. They don't pay me to do this. I'm doing this because I believe in something. I want to share it with you. Honor my presence. By giving of yourself, okay? Here we go. The So you have 
have to say it now. Here we go. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. Okay, do it yourself. Sing it your Say it yourselves. Probably sounds like the same, the sound of change, of unity, of everybody coming together and, and singing together. It probably was such an amazing feeling of just peaceful harmony. Absolutely, very well said. It was all those things. It was such a sound that you could just, you could feel it if you could just get yourselves to sing a little more, in a little more focused fashion. You would feel it, and you would, you would get that from it right here. You wouldn't say, oh, I have to look at the, at the tape to see it. You'd feel it right here, because every time I sing, almost every time I sing, that happens once again. And people feel that, and, and well, guess what happens? They say, hey, this struggle is not over. We are still doing this. And that's what singing like this does. I'm trying to explain to you what the place of music is in the struggle for justice and how that relates to Brown versus Board of Education and the Civil Rights Movement. If you'd understand that, not to talk about it, but to experience it, all you have to do is sing or talk with me and you'll hear it. Yes, somebody else. What is that the sound of? Uh, I see it more of as uh, assuring because when everybody was singing together, it, it sounds like to me assuring that even when everybody's singing together is that everything's gonna be all right. And knowing that there's more, there's power and unity and there's harmony in singing. Exactly, it is assuring each other that we are together and that we are empowered to make this sound. If we can make this sound and we can feel together, we can hang together. And we hang, we, we were able to hang together from that time when we never even dreamed there could be an African-American president to a time in which we have one. And that unanimity of spirit is part of empowering our ability to be able to go forward and make a more just country and land. And that is really what, what music is able to help happen. And there was somebody else with an answer over here. What does that sound to you? Thank you. Thank Hope, you for your answers. Hopefully, I don't get you upset. Tell me I, about your name first. Madeline. A little closer to you. Madeline. Mind. Yes, darling. Um, I actually thought it was, uh, it's not a confirmation or it doesn't affirm anything when you say the answer's in the wind, but it leads to hope. So why people sing is, is their hope within that comes out. Exactly. It is the sound of hope. It is the sound of peace. Because when we're together, we're not in conflict. Then we're, we're not pushing against each other. So this sound can be not just a symbol of something, it can be actually something that is lived. I lived a moment of peace. I lived a moment of caring. I lived a moment of unanimity of spirit. Last yesterday, Peter came to this place. We were with John Jay, and I lived a moment of that feeling that was shared at that march. And it is a feeling of togetherness, unity, openness of heart. Let's try that again, the answer, my friend. The answer. 
Sir, my friend, ice is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. Now a little louder. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. And now I could say, let's go out and march on the administration building that's not allowing kids to eat porridge at four o'clock in the morning or whatever they're doing that's stupid. So, so you have a little bit of a sense of this. Now, that, that, that kind of sharing, it's not intellectual sharing, although there is intellect involved, is very, very important to have as part of movements for change and move, movement for social justice where people feel connected. Not just there's a leader and the leader's got something to say, but we have something to say together. The empowerment of individuals, grassroots individuals. So you're sitting there and you're saying, hey, I, I just did something. I cannot make that sound. I don't care how good I am, how many American Idol contests, anybody wins, they can't do that. The only people who can do that are the people. The people who ultimately make the changes. Changes will not hold unless people embrace them. It is, that's why we're saying, you know, in order to make peace in the Middle East, it has to come not just from policy and leadership, it has to be in the hearts of the people. And that's one of the, that's one of the things we realized if we want to have equity and fairness in the United States vis-a-vis -vis people of color, we have to shift the culture so that people actually say, hey, I, I'm, I'm with you. We can be brothers and sisters. We can be friends. We can accept and appreciate each other. We don't have to separate into groups whereby you are Inferior and I am superior. Feeling good is not a zero-sum game. In other words, if some people are feeling this good and other people are not feeling well, and these people down here feel better, that doesn't mean these people have to feel worse. We can all feel better. We can all experience more justice and freedom. Now, my check. I like you. To learn, the words to learn the words of a chorus, of, a chorus. of another song, of another song. That, relates that relates to this course, to this, course. To this, school. To this school, and to this class. And to this class. Here, they are. Here they are. Please, Please. Say, say the words. I'm sharing, I'm sharing louder, louder, much louder, much louder, even louder, even louder. Very good, very good. Why are some of you, why are some of you looking at me, looking at me, rather than saying, rather than saying the words after, the words after, I say them, I say them. Is it because you have gone to sleep? Is it because you have gone to sleep? Or you have lost faith in your magic dragon? Or you have lost faith in your magic dragon? Okay. Okay. Here are the words. Here are the words. Have you been to jail for justice? Have you been to jail for justice? I want to shake your hand. I want to shake your hand. Because sitting in and lying down. Because sitting in and lying down. Our ways to take a stand. Our ways to take a stand. Have you sung a song for freedom? Have you sung a song for freedom? Or marched the picket line? Or marched the picket line? Have you been to jail for justice? Have you been to jail for justice? Then you're a friend of mine. Then you're a friend of mine.
Was it Caesar Chavez or Rosa Parks that day? Some say Dr. King or Gandhi that set them on their way. No matter who your mentors are, it's pretty plain to see that if you've been to jail for justice, you're in good company. Have you been to jail for justice? I want to shake, I want to shake your hand Cause sitting in, cause sitting in and lying down A ways to take a stand Have you sung, have you sung a song for freedom or march? Justice, I want to shake, I want to shake your hand for sitting in, for sitting in and lying down, a ways to take a stand. Have you sung, have you sung a song for freedom or march the picket line? Have you been, have you been to jail for justice? Then you're a friend of mine. Well, you law abiding citizens, come listen to this song. Laws were made by people, and people can be wrong. Once unions were against the law, but slavery was fine. Women were denied the vote, and children were the mind. The more you study history, the less you can deny it. A rotten law stays on the books till folks with guts defy it. I say folks with guts defy it. I said folks with guts defy it. Have you been to jail for justice? I want to shake. I want to shake your hand. Cause sitting in, sitting in, in line of ways, a ways to take a stand. Have you sung, have you sung a song for freedom or march? Or march the picket line? Have you been to jail for justice? Then you're a friend. Let me ask you, how many of you think, how many of you heard somebody talk about um, um, what is the case in point that I have? Hang on. Oh, how many of you think have have any of you heard about Bitter 70, Tim De Christopher? Tim De Christopher. He, what he did was he went into a, an auction of land in front of the Bureau of Land Management, or put on by the Bureau of Land Management. These were lands near Canyonlands National Park and... Uh, in, 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 in Utah, that were Arches National Park, and, and he's an environmental activist. So he, uh, he, went, he, he went into the, he was picketing, and he wanted to stop this sale because 
this was actually an illegal auction. It was in the last uh, days of the Bush administration. And it, they hadn't gone through the ra proper processes. It was a, a kind of a gift to the oil and gas people, to give them the rights to buy this land very cheaply. And he went in and he wanted to stop it. And he went in and somebody looked at him and he said, are you here to bid? And he said, why well, yes. And they gave him a paddle. It had the number seven on it, 70, seven zero. And he sat down and he saw these lands going up for sale. And one of them, he realized right away, they were, it was $10 an acre, it was you know, ridiculous. So he started bidding. A million eight hundred thousand dollars later, he had won a lot of land. He didn't have any money, however. So uh, the government brought charges against him. Now he did this as an act of what is called civil disobedience. Does anybody know what civil disobedience is? Raise your hand if you do. What's civil disobedience? What is civil disobedience? This is when you break the law conscientiously, are willing to take the punishment, uh, and do it publicly for and a just cause. And, and why do you do that? For a just cause. For a just cause. And, and, what, and he felt that by interrupting this, this uh, auction, and preventing these lands from going on sale, he was going to do something to prevent a greater harm from occurring, which is global warming, because part of what is bringing us global warming, that's why he's an environmental activist, is the continuing pursuit of extracting fossil fuels at this furious rate. So, now, how many of you would think that you would have heard a lot of people say, he broke the law, he's got to pay the price, he's got to pay, he's got to be punished. How many of you think you might have heard people say that? How many of you heard that? He broke the law. Raise your hands high. Let's see, the people who didn't, raise your hands. Raise your hand if you didn't raise your hand. I'm going to ask you again then. Because if I see somebody who didn't raise your hand, I'm going to ask you, why? Raise your hand if you think that you have heard somebody say, he broke the law, he's got to pay the price. Okay. Now, Peter, Paul, and Mary got arrested in front of the South African embassy. Intentionally, we broke the law. If you stand in front of that line, you break the law. That's, you're not allowed to stand there. And you go into the area that is designated. For, you're not allowed to demonstrate. We did it because we wanted to demonstrate our commitment to the anti-apartheid movement, right? The anti-apartheid movement. Who knows what the anti-apartheid movement was? Raise your hand. All right, somebody who hasn't answered. Who hasn't answered? Raise your hand and knows what the anti-apartheid movement is. Who knows what, but hasn't already spoken? Okay. Okay, somebody over here. Thank you. Pass it over. Why would Peter, Paul, and Mary get arrested together? What's the anti-apartheid movement? Okay, I was, wasn't sure which question you wanted me to Yes, ask. yes, yes. Anti-apartheid movement, apartheid in South Africa was uh, the forced separation of black Africans and white, Afri white Africans language. Right. Um, and the whites held the political power over, political and social power over black Africans and forced them into slavery, really. A kind of slavery. Mm -hmm. Certainly they 
they had to uh, live in separate areas, they didn't have rights, and that was called apartheid. And the United States had a boycott of South Africa, and in order to support that, we went there. And what did we do to get arrested? We crossed the line, and guess what we did? Peter, Paul, and Mary. We were accompanied by my daughter, who was 14 years old with green hair, her mother, Mary's mother, uh, two, uh, two seminarians. What do you think we did? We sang. And what do you think we sang? What? If I had a hammer. No, actually, we, but close. Good guess. What else? What else do you think we say? What's the most sacred song of the movements? We shall overcome. Thank you. We say we shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. to stop singing, you're breaking the law. Well, how many of you think we should have gone to jail for that? Well, a lot of people did. But in this case, over 3,000 people, including members of the US Senate and the Congress, got arrested together because there is something called civil disobedience, which is a very important part of our system of justice where you do something that is it doesn't hurt anybody but what it does is it says i'm standing up for something i believe in how many of you believe if somebody goes to jail uh, breaks the law that they should go to jail or be punished raise your hands how many of you have been taught in this school that when you break the law, you get punished. You go to school, you have to pay the price. Yeah. Okay, let me deposit something for you. Here we are, where, where you're a freedom rider, okay? You get on a bus, and it's against the law in Alabama to ride in the front of the bus if you're if you're a person of color, right? In Alabama, it's against the law. In, you start in the bus in Washington, D.C., and according to the national law, you can be in the front of the bus, right? So you're riding down in this bus, you're a freedom rider, you're a person of color or not a person of color, and you're riding and you're riding and you're riding, and you're not breaking the law, and somebody comes on, on the bus and says, and you're, and you're, not, in, you're not in Alabama yet, you're, you're in Delaware, okay? And somebody says, okay, you in the front of the bus, you're breaking the law. You say, no, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're in Delaware, it's not against the law. Okay, oh, I guess you don't have to go to jail. Now, 
You pass into Alabama and they rent you off the bus, they beat you, they set dogs upon you, they, they break your bones and they throw you into jail. How many of thing you think you should have been thrown into jail for sitting in the front of the bus? You broke the law, what's the matter? You go to jail. How dare you say you shouldn't go to jail? One of you tell me, why shouldn't you go to jail? Why? Tell me why. Why? Okay, good. Go ahead. I don't believe that any, that every wrong, I guess every law that's broken is worth going to jail for. Exactly. The whole point is, you don't, you know, there was a time when it was illegal for women to vote. You broke the law, you go to jail. Oh, it's time? Oh, heck. All right, well, I'm gonna wind up because I didn't realize that I was, I forgot that I had a time limit. But here is the point. That's the song, Have You Been to Jail for Justice? All these leaders, Cesar Chavez, Rosa Parks, she broke the law. She got on the bus and she sat in front. Laws change. Your job is not to observe the law, but make sure that laws are fair. That's your job. If you're gonna be in criminal justice, yes, you have a responsibility to say that's the law. But your other responsibility is to say, is this a just law? Laws change. How many of you are growing grass in your apartment? <laughs> okay, let's say half of you are growing grass in your apartment. All the men here are growing grass in your apartment. All right? Now I'm gonna ask you, I'm telling you, that's the condition of this discussion. All of you who are growing grass in your apartment, raise your hands. Okay, all of you who are not growing grass in your apartment, raise your hands. Okay, all of you who are in jail now for growing grass, and there are hundreds of thousands of you for, for having marijuana or distributing, all of you, you stay in jail. All of you who just broke that law but live in the state of Washington, or, or you know, or the state of Colorado. Guess what? It's not the law anymore. Guess what? It was the law once that people of color could not vote. If you demonstrated against that and passed over that line and linked arms and sang, we shall overcome. Are you being disloyal to America? You broke the law. If you think you are being disloyal to America, raise your hand. If you think you are standing up for what's best in America, called justice, beyond the law, justice, raise your hand. If you're not sure, and you really want to get an F, Raise your hand. <laughs> okay, essentially what I've come to tell you is this. That in order to be on the side of justice, we need to get our hearts together. It's not just a matter of our brains. Music can help do that. I've tried to explain to you how that factored into my, my life. That is still the case. And if you, in your efforts, to do your work in the criminal justice system. Think of yourself not just as a person following orders, but a person who thinks about justice and fairness, and you will be on the side of what I consider to be making this nation great. And I hope that you will bear that in mind as the years pass and you sing Puff the Magic Dragon and remember that Puff was not about marijuana. And you heard it from the dragon's father's mouth. Thank you all. <laughs> yes, any questions, yes.
You can all go if you want, or you could stay for questions. Hold on, hold on. Uh, as a as a tribute to the late uh, Peter Seeger, could you uh, sing uh, "If I Had a Hammer"? No, if I had a hamburger because I'm hungry. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to sing it for you, but I'm not going to sing it in the back of the microphone. I'm going to sing it like I'm It's still the bell of freedom. It's still the song about love between the brothers and the sisters. All, all over this land. Pete Seeger wrote this with Lee Hayes. It's the other song we sang at the March on Washington in 1963. And I sing it today. Yes, and not all laws are just. Right ahead. The brothers and the sisters oh, 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 over this land, 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 land. If I had a song, I'd sing it in the morning. 